Hello, it's Sarah Berry from stampwithsarah.co.uk. Today I've got this fun gatefold card to show you how to make. So we have a rabbit on skis and this little thing is from the Freezing Fun stamp set. And they, there's also coordinating dies as well. So you can either get them separately or together as a bundle and you actually save 10% when you get them as a bundle. So I've chosen the rabbit. Yesterday, if you want to go back to my previous video, I made a couple of penguin cards. Just shows you another of the animals from the stamp set. So if you want to go back, you can watch that video from yesterday. So this is a gatefold and the blue is actually misty moonlight, but I want to mix it up a bit. I want to do a pink Christmas card. So this is Magenta Madness. Now what I've got here is a piece of A4 cardstock. And I'm going to cut that down. I'm going to cut that in half here. So put your, trip, um, put your card in landscape in your paper trimmer. And half is 14.8 centimetres, which is here. Like that. So now I've got two pieces exactly the same size. So I also have three sheets of Whisper White. This is our standard Whisper White that you will be stamping on and die cutting and embossing with. They're all the same size, so they are 10 centimeters by 14.3 centimeters. I also have a piece of matching pattern paper in Magenta Madness. And this is from our um, In Color 2020 20 to 2022 In Color patterns. I have a piece of thick Whisper White card. This is for my tree and rabbit. Now I have this, this is the Evergreen Embossing Powder 3D one with the trees. And lastly, some of our adhesive backed snowflakes. I will be using blends as well today. So if I go back to this pink card, I'm going to pop it back into the trimmer and what I want to measure 14 sorry not 14 4.75 centimeters so four and a quarter centimeters 4.75 so that's there and score that then I'm going to take it out turn it round and do exactly the same from the other end 4.75 So now I've got two scores. With my bone folder, if I can find it, there it is. Just making sure those are nice and flat and nice and creased. I've done it wrong. <laughs> it's not 4.75. Okay, so it's 5.25. I don't got my measurement wrong. How silly. Okay, let's try that again. 5.25. That's better. 5.25. The other measurement is for the pattern paper. There we go. Okay, so those will meet in the middle. Now we have the white pieces. Where did I put them here? Now this one will fit in there like that, but before we put it in, I'm going to do some stamping. Now I'm using blends, as I said, so I use the black memento, and this is one of the large trees 
from the same stamp set. I'm just going to stamp that down there in the corner. And then I'm also going to add this, which is wee. And I'm putting that down there. So that's what the rabbit is saying as she's flying down the hill. This is Old Olive in Dark. Now the tree is covered in snow, so I'm just colouring in between the snow. It's always hard to do this when I haven't got my head right over the colouring because that's where the camera is. So I've I have gone over the line a little bit. Okay, so that's ready to get stuck down with double-sided tape. And this is our stamp and seal. This is our new double-sided tape in a like a tape runner in a mouse. And that sits in there. Now, I did have some other greetings and I've just grabbed Happy Christmas from this Itty Bitty Christmas and I forgot to stamp it before I stuck it in. So let's see if I can do this. There we go. So that's Happy Christmas, but there are lots of other lovely ones in here, like this one. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Nice. Lots of love at Christmas. That's quite nice. That sort of follows the, the hills here. Okay, so that's that. Now we're going to just decorate these inside panels. Now I mentioned that I have a piece of pattern paper that matches. And for that, um, it's six by six at the moment, that's how the paper comes. So I'm going to make it 14.3. Just take a sliver off and then turn it and I want 4.75. That's where that measurement comes in. So this just takes that pattern paper in slightly. So it sits nicely there. Now what shall I do? I really like these dots. I'm gonna go for the dots. Although this side does look like a bit of a snow, a snow something, snow flurry or something. But I do like the dots. It's almost like snowballs, isn't it? It's nice and bright and fun. Put that all around the edge. I have a feeling this is going to run out. There we go. So that's the inside of our card, nice and bright. And now we're going to do the front. Now the front takes a little bit more um, cutting. First of all, we're going to use that evergreen embossing folder. And the trees are actually on the side. They're not down here as you probably might expect, they're actually off to the side. So lay your white piece in there and then it's going to go into my machine. And because it's a 3D folder, that just goes straight down onto number one platform. And then there's also, when you get your machine, you have this grey, which is a number four. Um, and because the 3D folder is so thick, you don't need any clear plates. This grey one is doing the job of what your plates would do. Okay, so that's come through there. Like that, look how fun that is. Really nice. Now I want to chop this down 
not in length because it's already 14.3 but I, what I want to do is make it 4.75 One like that so that's going on the left panel and then another one 4.75 and that will go on this right side here just take that fluffy edge off just because it's slightly it's almost like the texture of like textured wallpaper this embossed in folder really has added a load of texture onto there so because it's so textured I'm going to go straight for my wet glue and that's going to get in all those little bumps and instead of using the tip I'm just brushing it on with this end don't tend to use this end, but I do for when it's quite textured like that. Oh, doggy! So that goes down there. And then we do the same on the other side. So you see the patterns, the picture matches, it lines up. So don't get them mixed up. Make sure you're doing the right side. I mean, if you, if you didn't, it, I mean, I don't think it's going to matter. Across the top there. And that goes like that. Just get that glue off. Right now, now there's a, a really cool pit, bit. Look at that. Look at that embossing folder. Love it. So now we're going to create these slopes and you might be thinking, oh, how do we do that? It's got a cut in the middle. It's exactly the same as before, except we're die cutting this time. And in the die set, you'll get one of these. It is 16 centimetres long, so it's just over six inches and it will fit in our machine. You just want to pop it like that and run it through. So for die cutting, we want base plate number one, and there's a thin number two, and number three, your paper, your cardstock, and then a number three again. This is roughly in the middle, this die, and so it's cut the two pieces. And the great thing about the die is that it has got two stitched lines and the cut line in the middle, so that's why it's split. So you've got two hills, two slopes. Now, what we want to do it depends on what trimmer you have, if you have something like a guillotine then I would glue these together now and then cut them because a the guillotine is quite strong and it will cut through the two. If you're just using a trimmer like I am, then you want to do these separately. Um, to be honest, my trimmer will cut through, this Stampin' Up trimmer will cut through two layers of cardstock. Um, but just in case yours doesn't, we're gonna do them separately. And as if they'd be glued together, if you are worried about getting glue on um, the blade of your trimmer, I wouldn't do it this way either if you're gonna if you were gonna glue them together first. So do them separately. Now this is tricky. You want to make sure they line up at the end of this. So just pay attention to what piece, it's almost like a jigsaw, what piece goes together with what. So you want 14, oh, sorry, four. Seven five, and then again four and seven, seven five centimeters. 
all right so then they still go together and they will sit along there like that now I think that's a bit high so I'm going to um, trim those at the end uh, I'm going to take something off of this at the moment now let's take about that much off. same again 4.75 centimeters and then again 4.75 centimeters like that those two go together now let's get this right I do feel like that is a bit high because I want to see as much of those trees as possible so I'm just going to take Uh, two and a half centimeters off from this side and do that the same again on this one two and a half you play about with the measurements what you think so they go together and they go together like that so those slopes are really quite close together and these are further apart so it's up to you how you want to do it. I might just take a centimetre off of those now. How fussy. Just to give a bit of a distance. There we go. So these get stuck down on top of each other. Like I said, let's just do that jigsaw before we add any glue. Yeah. So that goes on there. And this one. Oops. Goes there. Then on the back, add some foam pads. I just add one in the four corners. Once you get your head around the measurements and the layers, I think these would be quite quick to make. If you batch, you know, want if you want to, if you want a card that's, you know, slightly different and a bit more interest. Oh, I love it! Look at that. Okay, so now it's time to do our rabbit. So as I said, I've got a piece of thick Whisper White. And I like to do any stamping and blend colouring with my blends, especially if I'm making like um, a topper piece, rather than use the thinner um, cardstock. But that's okay if that's all you have. That's uh, that's good too. Okay, so one rabbit and one tree. So my blends, this is my favourite part, colouring in. I have Old Olive, let's just colour the tree in first. It's just a little version of the what's inside the card. Like that. Okay, and then we have... Um, Rococo Rose, uh, I'll use the light, now for this I colour his little nose, a little splodge either side of the cheeks, that's it. Then I'm going to go straight for the crumb cake light and make sure I blend out those, that pink on his cheeks a little bit before the blend, um, before the alcohol in the pen dries. There we go. On the ears. And then I will just add a bit of pink just inside the ear like that. And then go back over in little circles with the pen 
just to blend that out a bit. I'll bring in the dark crumb cake, add a bit to the hair, the underside of the ear, the chin, the eyebrows and the eyes. And then again, bring back the light crumb cake and just do little circles to sort of blend that out a bit. Okay, that's his head. And now sticking with the light color, the body. And the little feet. Just take the dark, color of the feet, the underside of the leg, the back, arm. And again, take the light back again and just blend that out. Little circles. Oh, stick with the light. Go onto the arm, the body, and the legs. A little bit of shading on the leg that's furthest away and the arm that's furthest away. There we go. Now the got the wrong lid on. The um, scarf. I've got Bermuda Bay. So this is the light. Just go all over the scarf with the light. Then with the dark, I'm going to do the scarf that's in the wind at the back in dark and then just under the chin a little bit of dark like that and then the skis I've just chosen the light balmy blue I couldn't leave them not coloured in because I think the tail the fluffy tail stands out could do them in yellow do a different colour, could do orange, just like the blue. And there we go. So these will get die cut now. And they are in my little pack. There's the rabbit. And the tree. I cut these so as I said before the sandwich for this is a one, a two, the clear plates and in between the clear oh we're doing dies and stamps it's a one, a two, a five and a clear plate just because I want to use that magnetic platform that magnetic plate there it goes like that over the top and the tree now if you prefer if you're a bit nervous about cut it, die cutting die cut them first and then color them in because there's nothing worse than spending time coloring and then you your dye slips or something in your machine if you're not using a magnetic plate. Okay. And as I said that I've just slipped on my <laughs> I've just slipped on my tree. Typical. Oh, just take that one off. I'm not sticking any foam pads on the end of there because I want it to overlap the front of the card like that. Now I'm just going to do that tree again. I think I've 
die cut it first. Deja vu. I've already done this step, but that's part of it, isn't it? I really love the bright colour of the pink. Makes a nice change. A couple of foam pads, and then I will put that just here. Now the finishing touch has got to be these adhesive backed rinds, um, adhesive backed snowflakes. There's three of those. And there we are. Here's our two cards, one in pink and one in blue. There's a lot of die cutting and embossing on this, but I really feel like it was worth going to all that effort. How fun are they? And the spots just really make it, don't they? So, I hope you've had um, a nice time watching. Thank you very much for joining me. If you have any questions about the product that I've used today, you can send me an email or leave a comment in, below on YouTube. And all the products can be found in my online UK Stampin' Up! shop. Thanks everyone, and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.